lamp is burning low upon my tabletop. The snow is softly falling. The air is still in the silence of my room. I hear your voice softly calling. If I could only have you near to breathe a sigh. I'd be happy just to hold the hand I love on this winter's night with you. The smoke is rising in the shadows overhead. My glass is almost empty. I read again between the lines upon the page those words of love that you sent me. If I could only have you near, bear a cheer or two, I'd be happy just to hold the hand I love on this winter's night. I could only have you near to breathe a sigh or two. I'd be happy just to hold the hand I love to be once again with you on this winter's night with you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, uh, we have a great show lined up for you tonight. You saw all the different people that are on. And uh, I'm going to be here for most of the night on stage because I'm going to be gay burn for the night. And uh, look at my desk here. I mean, where would you get it? You wouldn't get it on the Late Late Show. So I'm going to go over and uh, ensconce myself over there. Uh, while you wait. Can you hear me now? How's the sound down there? That's Keith. That's Keith up at the back there. Maybe give him a round of applause because uh, he needs a bit of encouragement. Well, the person whose uh, idea to have these concerts, we had one um, a few months ago, and it was just great old fun. But the man, I think he's somebody everybody knows. I go, I, I work up here regularly in his recording studio out the, out the road there. And we go for lunch uh, in different little establishments, uh, and um, no matter where we go, the people know him because he's just probably one of the f one of the finest musicians in Longford, if not in the whole country. He plays any instrument you can think of. He's a great record producer, and uh, I'm going to introduce him. I'm going to have a few words with him before he performs. Would you welcome, please, Mr. Paul Gurney? <laughs> I always wanted to be on the Late Late Show. <laughs> you have been on the Late Late Show many times. I have. You have. Paul, I'm going to start on a, on a kind of a sad note because I've sort of been hanging out with you for the bones of 20, 25, 30 years. Yeah, I've been coming yeah. to, your, to your studio and having fun down there. And you always talked, and I'm, I had the lucky to meet your dad, Gordon. Uh, uh, and he was your typical Englishman. And uh, sadly, he passed away just passed a few weeks ago. Passed away three weeks ago, yeah. Yeah, he was um, just, a, you know, you came... You came to, to a place called Kilty Clower. Anybody ever been to Kilty Clower? There's one. I mean, if you are, if you have been, you're probably the only person from there. <laughs> it, it's, yeah. a, it's, a, it's a place with a population that's, a, that's diminishing Three. fast. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm one of them. Yeah. <laughs> but Paul, you came, you came uh, to, to Kilty Clower after being living uh, in a place with 11 million people Aye. in London. Oh, Jesus. And you found yourself in Kilty. I, I always, I pitied me poor dad in a way because he was, he, he, he had to be culture shocked. I mean, he had to be. He, he worked in the Midland Bank in Oxford Street in London and then all of a sudden moved over to Kilty where we used to say, like, you could nearly time the cars by the day. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and that was in the good times, like. That yeah. was a busy time. There'd be yeah. three cars a week. Yeah. 
<laughs> and then it got busier, yeah. and then there was four, and then one of the other lads bought a car. There was five cars then one week. <laughs> is, it, is, it, is it true that you played all your county football matches on the street? <laughs> you didn't he need did a football surely, pitch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, he had a, he had a, what was described on Facebook as a, a little curiosity shop. He had, we had a shop. We had surely dad. Um, that was the family home. And what happened was my aunt died very suddenly. So mom and dad had to move back to take over the family home again, mm. which is quite a move, quite a shock. Mom was a nurse. And so she moved back to nurse in Manor Hamilton. And... Um, Serious change, you know, mm -hmm. serious change. But uh, look at, outside of, of the sadness of Dad's passing, I mean, Kilty was, uh, Michal, who you met at, at, at the funeral, that just such a fantastic place to grow up. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I see, Jerry, is that you there in the, in the second row? <laughs> I'm going to bring you up there someday. Because Jerry, stand up to me, see you. <laughs> historically, <laughs> Jerry, Jerry Warnock there, ladies and gentlemen, in, in the second, and we're, we're good friends, as, as we are with Christy as well. Jerry's a great historian. I know you love your history. And uh, it's the place where Sean McDermott uh, comes from, one of the 1916 guys who was executed. So it's full of history. It's full of um, stories. Um, a great place. What a place to grow up like. And full of music, you know, Paul. Ah, God, I mean, full of music. Legends yeah. like Ben Lennon, Morris Lennon, right. all the Lennon family, the Shanleys. Yeah, Brian and Rooney. The first time I met you, actually, was at an, an audition for, for Thromogus Atrum. Yeah. On a real snowy night. Do you remember yeah, that? I do, surely. That was way back in 1979. Slid down the hills. We slid down the hills on the accordion case. <laughs> thing. Christmas thing. in those days, Paul. You know, do you remember the fun? I don't know. It's not that terrible much. I suppose it was usual enough. Kind of Christmas for a child. It's just, it was a very safe place to grow up. That was the great thing I remember about mm -hmm. it. You know, I'm going to tell you a yarn before, before I go. And you mentioned the Lennons there. Ben Lennon actually told me this yarn. They, they reckon that my grandfather was a great character. And his name was Frank Dolan. Now, back in the day, uh, Mrs. Shanley, every time we'd be talking, she said, you, you got your grandfather's wit, she'd say to me. And um, he told me this story about Frank Dolan one time. He says, there was a couple of men in a pub in Kilty. Sorry, I should have said in the pub in <laughs> Kilty. And um, they were chatting away anyway. Frank Dolan was in the company and he was listening to what was going on. And the general conversation anyway was that there was going to be a new factory opened in Manor Hamilton. This was big news at the time because North Leitrim was just completely and utterly dead. So the, the word's going out, geez, did you hear about the new factory opened in Manor Hamilton? Cut it in, surely. Oh, geez, I heard it's going to be big. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's going to be big, all right. Huge. There'll be hundreds and hundreds of jobs in it. And Frank Dolan was listening all the time to this going on. The factory was getting bigger as the more drink the boys were taking <laughs> and the more jobs were going to be in it and it was getting bigger and bigger and Frank was still listening. And at the end of the thing, then he piped up and he says, they're opening another factory beside that, uh, at the, at that factory. The first one, that's, that's a, it's a button factory, he says. Uh, hundreds and hundreds of jobs. And Frank Dolan piped up. He says, they're opening another one beside it, you know. Beside what? Beside the button factory, yeah. Oh, another factory. And what are they going to be making there? Buttonholes. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, um, you know, th there's been an argument all week that I wasn't being allowed to talk. You know, <laughs> and you, you, you getting, you're going to gain, gain the, the... I hate talking, I swear to God. But you're... <laughs> <laughs> Who laughed there? <laughs> but Paul, y you know... Your, your, your big thing is music, and you know, you're going to play something for us now. I al always knew this uh, as flu release, but it's actually fu release. F U R or something. Yeah. It's, 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 it's a German a, or French. You know, I looked, up the, I looked up the definition of it. It's a, it's a bagatelle in A minor. Oh, sure, I knew that. Yeah. Oh, so, would you give him a bagatelle big round of applause? Bagatelle was the band that sang Summer in Dublin, wasn't it? That's it. <laughs> <laughs> he's going he's to play fu release. Thanks, Paul. I'll, I'll, I'll destroy this for you. Good go for it. <laughs>
Paul Gurney. Somebody said about Paul, he can play anything from Beethoven to Bach, and back again to Beethoven. <laughs> Give him a big round of applause. Paul Gurney, thank you. <laughs> I came across you first, um, really as part of the Solstice Choir. Yes. Um, and, you know, between yourself and your brother, uh, you do fantastic work, not just in having the choir going up and running, but, uh, but also uh, with all the work you do for different charities. And in this Christmas, is nothing different. You're very busy this Christmas. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we, we kind of do it in two blocks. We do a summer series and we do a Christmas series. And charities write into us every year. Um, and we pick five or six charities. And that's, that's what we do. We, we go out there and we raise money for them at Christmas time and at summertime. So we kind of have to get organized for Christmas in November. Because yeah. once December starts, that it, that's it, it's gone. <laughs> yeah, because Paul records all his Christmas songs in June. Uh, <laughs> isn't that right, Paul? <laughs> but, you know, uh, going back, you know, you've had your voice trained. Now, the last time we were here, we spoke to Paul Hennessy about how Veronica Dunn was his musical tutor. And she, tri mm -hmm. you know, she, he had his voice trained. And he said a very strange thing. He said when, he, when she was teaching him so to make sure that he was singing from down here, not from up here, because when you're trained singing, you have to sing from down here. She used to hold his, her hand on the inside of his trousers, <laughs> like this. <laughs> what kind of things did you get up to when you were getting trained? Well, uh, I can't say that ever happened, but um, oh, we could be doing anything from like lying flat on the floor to skipping around the room to dancing around the room. Yeah. Anything. Yeah. All kinds of strange things. Yeah. And these are kind of warm-up things that you would do to get yourself... They're warm-up things, and a lot of, like, the, the dancing and skipping around the room, the idea would be that you would relax, because when you, when you start thinking about what you're doing with singing, you automatically tense up, so it's to forget about what you're mm. doing, and the sound would suddenly mm. be mm. something totally different, you know? I, I, you know, people maybe here would, I'd certainly be interested in hearing, what is the difference, you know, between somebody who's a trained singer, you know, that has that lovely classically yeah. trained voice, and then, because you're both, you're, you're a contemporary singer, you know, yeah. you sing, you're singing, for example, time after time tonight, yeah. and you could, e equally so, you're singing something classical later on. Yeah. Give us an example of what, say, for example, let me just take, um, we are the rock and roll kids. <laughs> How would that sound in contemporary, the sound, I, I'd sing it. We were the rock and roll kids. No, sing it in a classical voice. Oh, God, and you're totally putting me on this spot. Uh, go on, you can do it. We were the rock and roll kids. Woo! <laughs> what about that? Give her a big round of applause. <laughs> God, I'd love to be able to sing like that. There's no doubt about it. Uh, but you're lucky to have both, both uh, things. So you're going to sing for us now. Tell I us, why, why did you pick this particular song? Um, well, I came across this song a few months ago. Um, I'd always kind of heard Cindy Lauper's version of it, but you know, I, I actually heard then Pink singing it. And sometimes different singers take songs and and you hear them in a different way because you know they slow them down or mm -hmm. they strip them back or whatever. Mm -hmm. it is. So I just heard Pink singing it, and it just suddenly became a whole different song for me, and I absolutely loved it. So great stuff. I want to give it a go. Over you go. Thank you. Emma Reynolds, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Time 
after time Sometimes your picture fades And darkness has turned to gray I'm watching If you're lost, you can look and you will find me Time after time If you fall, I will catch you, I'll be waiting Time after time If you fall, I will catch you, I will be waiting Time after time If you fall Thank you. Eva Reynolds. That's going to be a bit from, from the sublime to the ridiculous now. I'm back. <laughs> I haven't heard much uh, from you guys singing tonight. Maybe you might join in with this one. Uh, it's a song about a fella. I think he must have been a Leitrim man because uh, he was born. And 15 minutes after he was born, he went down and he loaded 16 tons of coal onto the back of a truck. It's the kind of thing we do in Leitrim, isn't it, Paul? Yeah, it's us, yeah. Uh, but there's a sing-along piece in this, and uh, anybody, anybody old enough to remember the 1950s there? There's one or two you remember the 1850s by the looks of you. <laughs> there's all this smoke, I can see nothing. But all you've got to do is go like... Goes... Try that. Try it one more time. Do, 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 do. These sound great. Do, 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 do. Try this. Do, 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 do. You're the band. Do, 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 do. Some people say a man is made out of mud. Poor man's are made out of muscle and blood. Muscle and blood. Skin and bones. A mind that's weak and a back that's strong. It loads 16 tons. What do you get? Another day older and deeper in debt. Say, Peter, don't you call me cause I can't go. I hold my soul to the company store. I do, 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 where I do, do, I do, 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 do. I was born one morning, the sun didn't shine. Picked up my shovel and walked to the mine. I loaded 16 tons, number nine coal. The straw boss hollered, he said, bless my soul. You loaded 16 tons, said, what do you get? Another day older and deeper in debt. Say, Peter, don't you call me, cause I can't go. I owe my soul to the company store. I do, 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 do. I do, 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 do. Let's take one, Paul. Stop showing off. Well, the great thing about this song, it's got a little sequence of chords. Just go. Do, do. Let's hear you. Come on. Do, do. Bit more. Do, do. Do, do. But there's something missing. Let's try another song with the same sequence of chords. Maybe to help us along. A young lady I got to know two or three years ago. She sang for me in the National Song Contest. Would you welcome, please, Cat Mahan? Jack, don't you come back 
things and go Hit the road, Jack And don't, don't you come, come back No more, no more, no more, no more Hit the road, Jack And don't, don't you come, come back, back no more What you say? Hit, Hit the road, Jack Come on and Don't Hit you come back, back no more, more, no more, no more, no more Hit the road, Jack And don't, don't you come back, back no more Well, a woman, mean woman Why'd you treat me this way? I could get back on my feet someday I don't care if you do, it's understood You ain't got no money, you just ain't no good Hit, Hit the road, Jack And don't you come back no more, no more, no more, no more Hit the road, Jack And don't you come back no more What you say? Hit the road, Jack And don't you come back no more, no more, no more, no more Hit the road, Jack And don't you come back I'm going to steal some of your water, Charlie. Is that okay? Well, everybody else has taken it, so you may as well. Whew. It's going to be well. I've had a, did I tell you I had a very bad abscess on my tooth? Go away. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You, it's gonna, you're going to have one yourself oh, now tomorrow. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, I, I've got to know you over the last two or three. I first heard you come in. To, the, to Paul's studio. You know, everybody involved in this concert has had something to do with Paul Gurney. Yeah, yeah, he's the common, the common thread, common yeah. link. But you know, uh, I, I was looking for somebody to sing a song in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the thing, and I said, I don't know what you were singing, but you just came in, and I said, that's the voice I want, you know. And was I right? Because even though we didn't win, the number of people that yeah. asked me about you and asked me, you know, you know, where did I find you? I remember Paul mm -hmm. Harrington. Uh, he said, where did you find her? Really? And where did you come from? Where did I come from? Well, New John Forbes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Out the road. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you, you know, you're a woman of, of many talents. You, you know, you work in the attic. Tell us about the attic. Uh, yeah, it's, um, it's a youth facility, a youth project for, um, for secondary school children in the county of Longford. So um, we've grown a lot in the last kind of eight years. So we interact with two thirds of all teenagers within the age of 12 and 18 in the county of Longford. So we engage two thirds. So you're talking about 2000 would be yeah. on our database. Like, so uh, yeah. It's when you say interact, work. what does that mean? What, what goes on there? It means engaging with them through different groups. Mm. I myself run seven groups in the attic. Um, I run a music group. Um, I run a girls fitness, girl, a boys yeah. fitness group and then youth committees as well. So, yeah. but it's a, it's a fantastic place to kind of teenagers need a place to call their own that's mm -hmm. outside of the home you know so yeah. they really come in and uh, socialize with peers and really treat their this place as their little house and it is it's exactly what it is it's not quite a youth club though it's 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 different than a youth club for some reason i've been there and i've been yeah. there with you and there's always something going on people yeah, moving yeah. around and picking up guitars and all yeah. kinds of stuff like that it's a really vibrant place it is yeah, yeah. it absolutely is and 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 to, and to get better what, what uh, you know you're now doing a you're doing a degree course over in Galway. yeah i am yeah because i'm not doing enough as it is <laughs> <laughs> i said i'll go back to college as well yeah, yeah i'm doing a uh, community and family development in nuig as well so you know when you said that i really was disappointed why <laughs> because I, it meant sort of you're not gonna have time to come in and sing for us in the studio you're too yeah. busy and it stuff is, like it's that tough now, it well is. we had a great we had a great few days though in the last couple of days just getting this show together yeah. and, and yeah. meeting everybody and, yeah. and uh, it's it's you know mr gurney of course looking as musical director of, ev of everything yeah. he's great what do you see musically uh, where do you think you, where do you think you're going to be going in 2017? Is it going to be more performances? Yeah, definitely. Um, I really enjoy working with other artists mm -hmm. and and sitting in with stuff that they're doing. Like that's something I really enjoy doing. Um, and I'm doing a little bit of work with a guy called Shane Byrne from Carlo at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, but with college and everything, it will be quiet. But mm. you know, I'll pick my time and and when the calendar allows me to do so, get into a studio and, and do a bit of work. Definitely. And where will you spend at Christmas? We're at home with my mum no. and dad, yeah, and, and yeah. The, and the little one. And the little one. And What's Gotchling. her name again? Cotchling. Cotchling, yeah. yeah. My mum's always coming out to me. She's out there somewhere. She's like, you're going to have to cook Christmas dinner one year. I was like, no, I, I refuse <laughs> to grow up. <laughs> going out to my mum. Well, look, at we're going to be hearing a lot more from you in the second half of the yeah. show. In the meantime, would you give a big round of applause to Catman? Thank, Thank you. you. 
Well, uh, some of you may know I, I have a radio program on a Saturday morning on, on Shannon Side and Northern Sound. And I, I get loads of different people. And I, I thought I was pretty sure about my sexuality until this man came in. And uh, <laughs> I said, if I was ever gay, I really would fancy this fella. <laughs> Do you know, that kind of way. Uh, I haven't tried it out yet now, but I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about it. Because I was 66 yesterday, believe it or not. Hey! I still get my kicks, and I'm 66. <laughs> I think I'll write a song about that. But anyway, this fella um, captured the hearts of a lot of the listeners as well, because he's, he's a great, great singer and a great songwriter. Would you welcome, please, Sean Rooney. Thank you very much. Jesus, I hope not. <laughs> I frightened Shawnee to death down there. Mind you, I heard a few fellas down there. I mustn't be the only fella that fancies you. You're just trying to get me, <laughs> get me nervous now, Charlie. That's all you're doing. Sean, you know, uh, you're pl plowing a tough furrow, if you don't mind me saying so. Because singer-songwriters, you know, they're coming down. But you've kind of, you've made funk and that kind of music. You're, you're sort of, the style that you're in. Where did all that come from, that that? That funky thing that you do. Yeah, well, I, I like, uh, I suppose it's from listening to older older music, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I, I, I kind of got into soul and, and funk and, and that sort of thing mm. around the age of about, I don't know, maybe 18 or 19. Yeah, I started yeah. to really get into it. Um, and a little bit of jazz as well. But um, it just kind of, I don't know, it just spoke to me at that time, mm -hmm. whatever it was. Mm -hmm. And I just thought, this is where it's at. Like, you, know, you know, listening to you, you know, at rehearsals earlier on, I don't know why this is, and I hope you won't be insulted when I say this, but Paul Weller comes into, into yeah, my Yeah, well, like, he's a huge influence of mine. Yeah, you know, yeah. um, he's probably my favourite artist. Uh, and it's just, it, you know, he's got such a massive back catalogue of great mm -hmm. music from the jam to the style council to the... You know, uh, almost, I think it's two decades of solo mm. music now. So, mm. um, and he was very much influenced by sort of uh, soul records from the s late sixties, early seventies, yeah. that kind of thing. So, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it's the whole kind of mod movement, I suppose. That whole, that whole one thing. thing that struck me uh, when you came off stage last, the last time we were here, you very vehemently said, "I love this place." <laughs> And what is it about backstage? Because you've been here, not, not like Mick now, who had, had never been here before that, yeah. and, but you've been here in all kinds of different guises. Yeah, I, I've, done, um, I've done a few plays, a few musicals and that kind of thing with the local um, St. Mel's Musical Society. Uh, I just, I don't know, there's something about this place. When I walk in the door, it just feels like, not home, but it feels like a second home, I suppose. You know, it just I, I know what I love? I love the smell. Yeah. Did you get the smell outside? There's a farmer after spreading slurry yeah. out there. <laughs> I'm not kidding. And I said, oh, I love that smell. And that. <laughs> but, you know, you've been, you know, struggling and struggling with your music and trying to get it out there and stuff. And yet we haven't had a, a, an official recording or album mm. yet. Is that something you hope to do in 2017? Yes, that is, uh, that is coming up very shortly. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. I actually, my manager is in the front row right now. Rachel. Oh, you got a manager? Yeah, oh, I got a manager in the, in the meantime since the last nice? time I was here. She actually oh, she, yeah, oh. she's in the front row. Um, is that you with the bowler hat down there? Her. Oh, yeah. yes. Miss, this lady uh, got her, uh, uh, what were you, Entrepreneur of the Year? No, 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 no. We want to hear about you. Tell us, what did she get there? She won the, uh, um, I can't remember the, the actual title, the Entrepreneur of the Year for uh, the Longford region, I think. Yeah. Uh, the Young Entrepreneur of the Year. Yeah. We, maybe we should, what's, your, what's her name? Rachel Masterson. Give her a big round of applause, Rachel. <laughs> Congratulations, Rachel. And uh, can I borrow that? Where did you get that hat? Where did you get that hat? Uh, can I borrow that hat? I love it. Give it to me here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brilliant. Oh, yeah. I think it suits you. It suits you, Charlie. Huh? I, think it, I think it works. Let me see. I don't want to ruin the hair. Well, I, I, uh, that's oh, good. yeah. I like it. Oh, what look at that. Doesn't that suit him? Yeah, <laughs> go for it. I don't know. Listen, you're going to sing. What are you going to sing for us? Uh, I'm going to do um, an original song called um, Perfect Strangers. It's... Uh, it's about, it, well, it's, it's kind of self-explanatory. It's mm. about meeting somebody for the first time and immediately having um, a deeper connection than, than is normal. Yes. You know? um, and the song kind of just extemporized from that. So that's, that's the... Sean Rooney, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you.
might want to adjust that first. <laughs> <laughs> that was a close one there. I remember looking for the time, thinking it's still early. Wasn't looking for a sign For days wait for no man And when you're having a good time You know it just slips on by What do you think Brought us together I don't believe in fate But I believe in perfect I remember looking in your eyes as you were peering into mine. You set my soul alight like a little bird on high. It took me into the sky. You and I into the night What do you think Brought us together I don't believe in fate But I believe in perfect strangers My eyes on your smile Can we just stay for a while and as the light comes pouring in, illuminates our sin. And I can't put a number on it from one to ten, but I'll never be the same again. Cause I remember looking for the time, thinking it's still early, wasn't looking for a sign. together I don't believe in fate but I believe in perfect strangers Ooh. and baby in the morning mm, on the covers you take away my breath leave my heart defense my eyes on your smile Can we just stay for a while And as the light comes pouring in Illuminates our sin And I can't put a number on it From one to ten But I'll never be the same again Cause I remember looking for the time Thinking it's still early wasn't looking for a sign Hey! Thank you, cheers. Um, my next guest, again, is a contemporary singer but who also has a trained voice. And um, the last time she was here, she was telling me how uh, she loves death metal and uh, heavy metal and all kinds of other metal-y stuff. Uh, and uh, she's also um, a trained singer as well. So I think there's a future here of a trained singer singing death metal. It has to work. Would you welcome, please, Valerie Nolan. <laughs> You know, when my daughter uh, came home with one of those nose rings, mm -hmm. I was very scared. Yeah. Is it, you know, is it hurt? No, it doesn't really. Yeah. No. Not, there's other places that could hurt. Is more. this your... Uh, <laughs> 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 uh, too much detail, please. Uh, but, you know, it's unusual for somebody who is a classically mm. trained singer to like heavy metal. Do mm -hmm. you actually sing any death metal songs, you know? No, because I'm, my voice is trained, so I'm not... Um, 
I'd be practical like that, mm -hmm. you know. So, mm -hmm. uh, but there are there's genres of metal that kind of cross over. There's classical with metal. And there's Slipknot. Girls, uh, and mm. then there's Slipknot, yeah. <laughs> but uh, you know, so there's different. You know, there is. Yeah. You can, you can melt. Mind, you know, the two can can work together. But mm. uh, no, I I actually like singing a lot of the old style blues, jazz kind of pieces. I was. I know it suits yeah. my voice better. You, you were telling me uh, earlier on that you, you, you the first Christmas present you really remember mm. is. A tape recorder, a silver tape recorder that Santa brought, and a lot of tapes, which kind of was like a mixture of different styles of music. But I remember actually it was a Christmas album, an Elvis Presley Christmas album, oh. White Christmas or something. Yeah, was it? Yeah, 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 yeah. And there was a couple of other, you know, yeah. bits and pieces and thrown in. And, then and you Patsy Klein, yeah. Patsy Klein. Yeah. You got a record player then in the house. Yeah, there was an old record player, I remember, because we, we would have Christmas uh, parties and. Um, there was one of the old Christmas record players. It was a, like a box that opened up, yeah. and you put the old forty-five records on it. Yeah, they were made yeah. out of vinyl. Yes. Yeah. And vinyl is making a comeback. I was at it a is, meeting. Yeah. yeah, it's making yeah. a huge comeback yeah. now. And people are <laughs> people are buying vinyl records, and they haven't even got a record player. Yeah. I think it's just they, they, it's yeah. a it's a it's a fad that's taken yeah. over, and it's yeah. really taken off. Yeah. But do you remember you you were telling me that there would be records in your house by people like Patsy Cline. Mm -hmm. uh, do you, do you, what was it that attracted you about her? She was just such a wonderful I singer. I loved her voice. Sang from the heart. Yeah, she had such a great voice, and her uh, that she had this this presence, you know, this mm. kind of thing in her voice. That yeah. That when she sang a song, like she made it her own. Like you yeah, know. Do you remember she used to sing? Uh, she used to sing one. I, I always remember it. You know. I fall to pieces. Yeah, yes. we're like everything. Would we all ever? know the I fall the pieces bit. <laughs> yeah. It's like we we did a Eurovision show yeah. a few years ago, and I thought I knew all the Eurovision songs, you know. Yeah. And I'd start off. <laughs> Waterloo, doodly 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 doodly. <laughs> we don't really. We think we think we know them. You're gonna you're gonna sing a really song that a song that I really love for yeah. us now. And uh, tell us about this one. This song, um, I sung this song uh, a long, long time ago. Um, it was one of the first big pieces I sang in Tops of the Town. Mm, but so that's going um, back. Yeah. You must be really old. <laughs> Not quite as old as you, Charlie. <laughs> Nobody's as old as me. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it was, a, it was a great song to sing. So, um, yeah, uh, Paul asked me to sing it. So yeah. I said I'd, I'd give it a go When again. Paul asks, you, you do. do. Yes. Yeah, yeah. 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 So uh, you're going to sing uh, I Will Always Love You. Yes. Va Valerie Nolan, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs>
every Tuesday, uh, well, most Tuesdays of the year, um, I go up to Paul's studio and um, we're also joined by somebody else and we discuss the world's problems and uh, we drink gallons of coffee. And we used to smoke cigarettes, but that's gone uh, by the wayside, thankfully. Um, but the other man who joined us and who was really one of the three of us, the three of us really thought it would be lovely to put something like this on. And uh, I think Paul uh, is, the f is the kind of a fella who uh, really needs a bit of direction. And the fella that looked after him was another fella called Paul. So would you welcome Paul Hennessy, please? <laughs> you don't get the weather you're expecting. I'm, get, I'm just getting ready to go home. So. You're not, you're not, is the car running outside? The car's running outside. Yeah. Paul, it's great great to see you. You know, um, the, the last time we did embarrass you by talking about your, your, your voice training. And, and you did it again tonight. Yeah, and it did give you a much higher voice than the rest of us. I have to say <laughs> that that feeling of the old... And the old yeah, 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 but okay. Yeah. Let's talk about that. You know, uh, one thing I noticed at rehearsals here, uh, and, you know, you're... Involvement with the Evolution Stage School. You have schools now um, all over the place. Yeah, Longford, Roscommon, and Kinnegad. Yeah. Kinnegad. And, you know, are there Christmas shows coming up? Not actual Christmas shows with the school, but we have kids involved in the Snowman Show in the Borgosh, which yeah. is actually on next Sunday. And then the Sunday after, there's uh, 56 kids from Evolution Stage School doing three shows on each Sunday. Isn't just, that? Yeah, to over 2,000 people in each show. Like, you know, you, you, you bring in these children, and, you know, I just noticed at rehearsals, we didn't, I, I didn't actually know they were here. You know, and it's difficult <laughs> to, you know, to not know children are around. They suddenly just appear on the stage, uh, like magic. Yeah. And they're beautiful, sort of smiling faces, and, uh, you know, it's just fantastic to hear them. Yeah. You know, are they, like that, are they like that when they come in? Yeah, a lot of them are, but then there's a lot of them who have, have to gain that confidence and yeah. feel comfortable yeah. to walk out, especially to walk out in front of an audience. It's, yeah. it's a big thing for a kid to do. It's yeah, a big thing for me to do as well. <laughs> but, you know, listening to Sean Rooney talking about he loved this place, and one thing I did get the impression that they really love what they're doing. Once they get involved in something like Evolution Stage, stage School, it's something that gives them a huge, a completely different yeah. outlook on life. And all the, all the kids you saw earlier, the, uh, they all performed here in October in our show, six nights here, yeah. and they loved it for the week. Yeah. You know? And you also put the show on in the, in the Helix, <coughs> don't you? At, at well, we did that for our fifth anniversary show, yeah. which was like a huge undertaking because mm. it was our three schools together. Yeah. So bringing all the kids together and we bust them all up for rehearsals and everything, it was, it was, it was huge. And who's that lovely lady that, that, that mm. was with us? Tracy. Tracy. Tracy's the choreographer, yeah. Yeah, and I was asking her earlier on, are you very stern? And she no. says, no. <laughs> no, the kids know what, to, what we expect from them, so yeah. we just, have to, we just have to look at them, really. Yeah, she can smile. <laughs> you know that look? <laughs> and they're like, okay. Yeah, it's great. It's a great yeah, gift, yeah, great no, gift to have. Great. Uh, y you know, I'm convinced that we need to hear uh, a Paul Hennessy tour, a solo tour. With maybe Tour of Longford. Which, no. <laughs> you know, we're used to hearing you with, you know, with the full bells and whistles, but um, later on tonight we're going to hear you singing something with, with no bells and whistles, which is, which is lovely to hear. But tonight, uh, for this, and this is going to be the closing part of the show, uh, tell us what you're going to do for us. Uh, tonight, uh, well, I have the kids coming on in a few minutes. Mm. Um, I'm just going to sing Silent Night. It's a lovely arrangement of Silent Night. I can't wait to hear it. Paul, Paul Hennessy, ladies Thank and gentlemen. Thank you. Thanks, Charlie. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, as I said, we have some, uh, some of the kids here from Evolution Stage School. So ladies and gentlemen, please welcome them to join me on Silent Night. Thank you.
Open no matter Hamilton. Could it be surely? Oh, you say, Herod is going to be big. Mm. Oh, it's going to be big, all right. Huge. There'll be hundreds and hundreds of jobs in it. And Frank Dolan was listening all the time to this going on. The factory was getting bigger as the more drink the boys were taking, <laughs> and the more jobs were going to be in it, and it was getting bigger and bigger. And Frank was still listening. And at the end of the thing, then he piped up and he says, They're opening another factory beside that oh, at, the, at that factory. The first one, that's that's a, it's a button factory, he says, uh, hundreds and hundreds of jobs. And Frank Dolan piped up, he says, they're opening another one beside it, you know. Beside what? Beside the button factory, yeah. Oh, another factory. And what are they going to be making there? Buttonholes. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, um, you know, th there's been an argument all week that I wasn't being allowed to talk. You know, <laughs> and you, you, you're, getting, you're going to gain, gain the, the... I hate talking, I swear to God. But you're... <laughs> <laughs> Who laughed there? <laughs> but Paul, you know, your, your big thing is music. And, you know, you're going to play something for us now. I al always knew this uh, as a flu release, but it's actually fur release. F U R or something. Yeah. It's, 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 it's a German a, or French. You know, I looked, up the, I looked up the definition of it. It's a, it's a bagatelle in A minor. Oh, sure, I knew that. Yeah. So would you give him a big round of applause? was the band that sang Summer in Dublin, wasn't it? That's it. <laughs> <laughs> he's going he's gonna to play for release. Thanks, Paul. I'll, I'll, I'll destroy this for you. Good go for it. <laughs> Thank you. 
Uh, yeah, I fall to pieces a bit. Yeah. It's like we we did a Eurovision show a yeah. few years ago, and I thought I knew all the Eurovision songs, you know. Yeah. And I'd start off. Waterloo. Doodly doodly doodly. <laughs> we don't really. We think we think we know them. You're gonna you're gonna sing a really song that a song that I really love for yeah. us now. And uh, tell us about this one. This song, um, I sung this song. Uh, a long, long time ago, um, it was one of the first big pieces I sang in Tops of the Town. Mm, but so, that's going um, back. Yeah. You must be really old. <laughs> Not quite as old <laughs> as you, Charlie. <laughs> Nobody's as old as me. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it was, a, it was a great song to sing. So, um, yeah, uh, Paul asked me to sing it, so yeah. I said I'd, I'd give it a go When again. Paul asks, you, you do. do. Yes. Yeah, yeah. 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 So uh, you're going to sing uh, I Will Always Love You. Yes. Va Valerie Nolan, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Every Tuesday, uh, well, most Tuesdays of the year, um, I go up to Paul's studio and um, we're also joined by somebody else and we discuss the world's problems and uh, we drink gallons of coffee. And we used to smoke cigarettes, but that's gone uh, by the wayside, thankfully. Um, but the other man who joined us and who was really one of the three of us, the three of us really thought it would be lovely to put something like this on. And uh, I think Paul uh, is, the f is the kind of a fella who uh, really needs a bit of direction. And the fella that looked after him was another fella called Paul. So would you welcome Paul Hennessy, please? <laughs> I 
hope you don't get the weather you're expecting. I'm, get, I'm just getting ready to go home. So. You're not, you're not, is the car running outside? The car's running outside. Yeah. Paul, it's great, great to see you. You know, um, the, the last time we did embarrass you by talking about your, your, your voice training. And, and right, you did it again tonight. Yeah, and it did give you a much higher voice than the rest of us, I have to say, <laughs> that, that feeling of the old... And the old yeah, 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 but okay. Yeah. Let's talk about that. You know, uh, one thing I noticed at rehearsals here, uh, and, you know, your involvement with the Evolution Stage School, you have schools now um, all over the place. Yeah, Longford, Roscommon and Kinnegad, yeah. Kinnegad. And, you know, are there Christmas shows coming up? Not actual Christmas shows with the school, but we have kids involved in the snowman show in the Borgosh, which yeah. is actually on next Sunday. And then well, Sunday after, there's uh, 56... <laughs> Paul Gurney. Somebody said about Paul, he can play anything from Beethoven to Bach, and back again to Beethoven. <laughs> Give him a big round of applause. Paul Gurney, thank you. <laughs> I came across you first um, really as part of the Solstice Choir. Yes. Um, and, you know, between yourself and your brother, uh, you do fantastic work, not just in having the choir going up and running, but, uh, but also uh, with all the work you do for different charities. And in this Christmas, is nothing different. You're very busy this Christmas. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we, we kind of do it in two blocks. We do a summer series and we do a Christmas series. And charities write into us every year. Um, and we pick five or six charities and that's, that's what we do. We, we go out there and we raise money for them at Christmas time and at summertime. So we kind of have to get organized for Christmas in November because yeah. once December starts, that it, that's it, it's gone. <laughs> yeah, because Paul records all his Christmas songs in June. <laughs> uh, isn't that right, Paul? <laughs> but, you know, uh, going back, you know, you've had your voice trained. Now, the last time we were here, we spoke to Paul Hennessy about how Veronica Dunn was his musical tutor. And she, tri mm -hmm. you know, she, he had his voice trained. And he said a very strange thing. He said when, he, when she was teaching him to make sure that he was singing from down here, not from up here, because when you're trained singer, you have to sing from down here. She used to hold his, her hand on the inside of his trousers, <laughs> like this. <laughs> what kind of things did you get up to when you were getting trained? Well, uh, I can't say that ever happened, but um, oh, we could be doing anything from like lying flat on the floor to skipping around the room to dancing around the room. Yeah. Anything. Yeah. All kinds of strange things. Yeah. And these are kind of warm-up things that you would do to get yourself... They're warm-up things, and a lot of, like, the, the dancing and skipping around the room, the idea would be that you would relax, because when you, when you start thinking about what you're doing with singing, you automatically tense up, so it's to forget about what you're mm. doing, and the sound would suddenly mm. be mm. something totally different, you know? I, I, you know, people maybe here would, I'd certainly be interested in hearing, what is the difference, you know, between somebody who's a trained singer... I still get my kicks... And I'm 66. <laughs> I think I'll write a song about that. But anyway, this fella um, captured the hearts of a lot of the listeners as well because he's, he's a great, great singer and a great songwriter. Would you welcome, please, Sean Rooney. Thank you very much. Are we, are we going to do the kiss? Jesus, I hope not. <laughs> I frightened Shawnee to death down there. Mind you, I heard a few fellas down there. I mustn't be the only fella that fancies you. You're just trying to get me, get me <laughs> nervous now, Charlie. That's all you're doing. Sean, you know, uh, you're pl plowing a tough furrow, if you don't mind me saying so, because singer-songwriters, you know, they're coming down. But you've kind of, you've made funk and that kind of music, your, your sort of the style that you're in. Where did all that come from, that, that, that funky thing that you do? Yeah, well, I, I like... Uh, I suppose it's from listening to older older music, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I I, I kind of got into soul and and funk and and that sort of thing mm. around the age of about 
I don't know, maybe 18 or 19. Yeah, I started yeah. to really get into it. Um, and a little bit of jazz as well. But um, it just kind of, I don't know, it just spoke to me at that time, mm-hmm. whatever it was. Mm-hmm. And I just thought, this is where it's at. Like, you, know, you know, listening to you, you know, at rehearsals earlier on, I don't know why this is, and I hope you won't be insulted when I say this, but Paul Weller comes into, into yeah, my Yeah, well, like, he's a huge influence of mine. Yeah, you know, yeah. um, he's probably my favourite artist. Uh, and it's just, it, you know, he's got such a massive back catalogue of great mm-hmm. music from the jam to the style council to the... You know, uh, almost, I think it's two decades of solo mm. music now. So, mm. um, and he was very much influenced by sort of uh, soul records from the s- late '60s, early yeah. '70s, that kind of thing. So, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it's the whole kind of mod movement, I suppose. That whole, that whole One thing. thing that struck me uh, when you came off stage last, the last time we were here, you very vehemently said, "I love this place." <laughs> And what is it about backstage? Because you've been here, not, not like Mick now, had, n- had never been here before that, yeah. and, but you've been here in all kinds of different guises. Yeah, I, I've, done, um, I've done a few plays, a few musicals and that kind of thing with the local um, St. Mel's Musical Society. Uh, I just, I don't know, there's something about this place. When I walk in the door, it just feels like, not home, but it feels like a second home, I suppose. You know, it just I, I know what I love? I love the smell. Yeah. Did you get the smell outside? There's a farmer after spreading slurry yeah. out there. <laughs> I'm not kidding. And I said, oh, I love that smell and that. <laughs> but, you know, you've been, you know, struggling and struggling with your music and trying to get it out there and stuff. And yet we haven't had a, a, an official recording or album mm. yet. Is that something you hope to do in 2017? Yes, that is, uh, that is coming up very shortly. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. I actually, my manager is in the front row right now. Rachel. Oh, you got a manager? Yeah, oh, I got a manager in the, in the meantime. Is he nice? Her hand. On the inside of his trousers, <laughs> like this. <laughs> what kind of things did you get up to when you were getting trained? Well, uh, I can't say that ever happened, but um, oh, we could be doing anything from like lying flat on the floor to skipping around the room to dancing around the room. Yeah. Anything. Yeah. All kinds of strange things. Yeah. And these are kind of warm-up things that you would do to get yourself... They're warm-up things, and a lot of, like, the, the dancing and skipping around the room, the idea would be that you would relax, because when you, when you start thinking about what you're doing with singing, you automatically tense up, so it's to forget about what you're mm. doing, and the sound would suddenly mm. be mm. something totally different, you know? I, I, you know, people maybe here would, I'd certainly be interested in hearing, what is the difference, you know, between somebody who's a trained singer, you know, that has that lovely classically yeah. trained voice, and then, because cont- you're both, you're, you're a contemporary singer, you know, yeah. you sing, you're singing, for example, time after time tonight. Yeah. And you could, e- equally so, you're singing something classical later on. Yeah. Give us an example of what, say, for example, let me just take, um, <laughs> we are the rock and roll kids. <laughs> How would that sound in contemporary? To sound, I, I'd sing it. We were the rock and roll kids. No, sing it in a classical voice. Oh, God. Are you totally putting me on this spot? Go on, you can do it. We were the rock and roll kids. Woo. <laughs> what about that? Give her a big round of applause. <laughs> God, I'd love to be able to sing like that. There's no doubt about it. Uh, but you're lucky to have both, both uh, things. So you're going to sing for us now. Tell I us, why, why did you pick this particular song? Um, well, I came across this song a few months ago. Um, I'd always kind of heard Cindy Lauper's version of it, but... You know, I, I actually heard then Pink singing it, and sometimes different singers take songs and, and you hear them in a different way because, you know, they slow them down or mm-hmm. they strip them back or whatever. Mm-hmm. So I just heard Pink singing it, and it just suddenly became a whole different song for me, and I absolutely loved it. So Great stuff. I want to give it a go. Over you go. Thank you. Emma Reynolds, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Valerie Nolan, ladies and gentlemen. If I 
I'm going to bring you up there someday. Jerry, stand up till we see you. Hi historically, <laughs> Jer Jerry Warnock there, ladies and gentlemen. In, in the second, and we're, we're good friends, as, as we are with Christy as well. Jerry's a great historian. I know you love your history. And uh, it's the place where Sean McDermott uh, comes from, one of the 1916 guys who was executed. So it's full of history. It's full of um, stories. Um, a great place. And what a place to grow up like. And full of music, you know, Paul. Ah, God, I full mean, of music. legends yeah. like... Ben Lennon, Morris Lennon, right. all the Lennon family, the Shanleys. Yeah, Brian and Rooney. I think the first time I met you actually was at an, an audition for, for Trumogus Atrum. Yeah. On a real snowy night. Do you remember yeah, that? I do, surely. That was way back in 1979. Slid down the hills. We the slid down the hills on the accordion case. Nothing. <laughs> Christmas Nothing. in those days, Paul. You know, do you remember the fun? I don't know. It's not that terrible much. I suppose it was usual enough. Kind of Christmas for a child. It's just, it was a very safe place to grow up. That was the great thing I remember about it. Mm -hmm. You know, I go, I'm going to tell you a yarn before, before I go. And you mentioned the Lennons there. Ben Lennon actually told me this yarn. They, they reckon that my grandfather was a great character. And his name was Frank Dolan. Now, back in the day, uh, Mrs. Shanley, every time we'd be talking, she said, you, you got your grandfather's wit, she'd say to me. And um, he told me this story about Frank Dolan one time. He says, there was a couple of men in a pub in Kilty. Sorry, I should have said, in the pub in Kilty. <laughs> And um, they were chatting away anyway. Frank Dolan was in the company and he was listening to what was going on. And the general conversation anyway was that there was going to be a new factory opened in Manor Hamilton. This was big news at the time because North Leitrim was just completely and utterly dead. So the, the word was going out, geez, did you hear about the new factory open in Manor Hamilton? Could it did, surely. Oh, geez, I heard it's going to be big. Mm. Oh, it's going to be big, all right. Huge. There'll be hundreds and hundreds of jobs in it. And Frank Dolan was listening all the time to this going on. The factory was getting bigger as the more drink the boys were taking and <laughs> the more jobs were going to be in it and it was getting bigger and bigger and Frank was still listening. And at the end of the thing, then he piped up and he says, they're opening another factory beside that, uh, at the, at that factory. The first one, that's, that's a, it's a button factory, he says, uh, hundreds and hundreds of jobs. And Frank Dolan piped up, he says, they're opening another one beside it, you know. Beside what? Beside the button factory, yeah. 
Oh, another factory. And what are they going to be making there? Buttonholes. <laughs> 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 Paul, um, you know, th there's been an argument all week that I wasn't being allowed to talk. You know, <laughs> and you, you, you getting, you're going to gain, gain the, the... I hate uh, talking, I swear to God. But you're... <laughs> 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 Who laughed there? <laughs> but Paul, you know, your, your big thing is music. And, you know, you're going to play something for us now. I al always knew this uh, as a flu release, but it's actually foo release. Uh, you are, or something. yeah. It's, it's, it's a, a German or French. You know, I looked up the I looked up the definition of it. It's a it's a bagatelle in A minor. Oh, sure, I knew that. Yeah. I spoke to Paul Hennessy about how Veronica Dunn was his musical tutor, and she, tri mm. you know, she, he had his voice to run around. And he said a very strange thing. He said when he, when she was teaching him to make sure that he was singing from down here, not from up here, because when you're trained singer, you have to sing from down here. She used to hold his, her hand on the inside of his trousers <laughs> like this. <laughs> What kind of things did you get up to when you were getting trained? Well, uh, I can't say that ever happened, but um, oh, we could be doing anything from like lying flat on the floor to skipping around the room to dancing around the room. Yeah. Anything. Yeah. All kinds of strange things. Yeah. And these are kind of warm-up things that you would do to get yourself... They're warm-up things, and a lot of like the, the dancing and skipping around the room, the idea would be that you would relax, because when you, when you start thinking about what you're doing with singing, you automatically tense up, so it's to forget about what you're mm. doing, and the sound would suddenly mm. be... Mm something totally different, you know. I, I, you know, people maybe here would, I'd certainly be interested in hearing, what is the difference, you know, between somebody who's a trained singer, you know, that has that lovely classically yeah. trained voice, and then, a because you're both, you're, you're a contemporary singer, you know, when yeah. you sing, you're singing, for example, time after time tonight, yeah. and you could, e equally so, you're singing something classical later on. Yeah. Give us an example of what, say, for example, mm -hmm. let me just take... Um, we are the rock and roll kids. <laughs> How would that sound in contemporary? If it sound, I, I'd sing it. We were the rock and roll kids. No, sing it in a classical voice. Oh, God. Are you totally putting me on this spot? Uh, go on, you can do it. We were the rock and roll kids. Woo. <laughs> what about that? Give her a big round of applause. God, I'd love to be able to sing like that. There's no doubt about it. <laughs> uh, but you're lucky to have both both uh, things. So you're going to sing for us now. Tell I us, why, why did you pick this particular song? Um, well, I came across this song a few months ago. Um, I'd always kind of heard Cindy Lauper's version of it, but, you know, I, I actually heard then Pink singing it. And sometimes different singers take songs and, and you hear them in a different way because, you know, they slow them down or mm -hmm. they strip them back or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I just heard Pink singing it and it just suddenly became a whole different song for me and I absolutely loved it. So Great stuff. I want to give it a go. Over you go. Thank you. Emma Reynolds, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Cheers.
Um, my next guest, again, is a contemporary singer, but who also has a trained voice. And um, the last time she was here, she was telling me how uh, she loves death metal and uh, heavy metal and all kinds of other metal-y stuff. Uh, and uh, she's also um, a trained singer as well. So I think there's a future here of a trained singer singing death metal. It has to work. Would you welcome, please, Valerie Nolan. <laughs> You know, when my daughter uh, came home with one of those nose rings, mm -hmm. I was very scared. Yeah. And is it, you know, is it hurt? No, it doesn't really. Yeah. No. No, there's other places it could hurt. Is more. this your... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, too much detail, please. Uh, but, you know, it's unusual for somebody who is a mm. classically trained singer to like heavy metal. Do mm -hmm. you actually sing any death metal songs, you know? No, because I'm, my voice is trained, so I'm not... Um, I'd be practical like that, mm -hmm. you know. So, mm -hmm. uh, but there are there's genres of metal that kind of cross over. There's classical with metal. And there's Slipknot. Girls, uh, and mm -hmm. then there's Slipknot, yeah. <laughs> but uh, you know, so there's different. You know, there is. Yeah. You can, you can melt. My, you know, the two can can work together. But mm -hmm. uh, no, I I actually like singing a lot of the old style blues, jazz kind of pieces. I was. I know it suits yeah. my voice better. Y you were telling me uh, earlier on that you, you, you the first Christmas present you really remember mm. is. A tape recorder, a silver tape recorder that Santa brought, and a lot of tapes, which kind of was like a mixture of different styles. <laughs> I'm just getting ready to go home. So you're not, you're not, is the car running outside? The car's running outside. Yeah. Paul, it's great, great to see you. You know, um, the, the last time we did embarrass you by talking about your, your, your voice training. And, and you did it again tonight. Yeah, and it did give you a much higher voice than the rest of us, I have to say, <laughs> that, that feeling of the old... Uh, and the old uh, yeah, 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 but okay. Yeah. Let's talk about that. You know, uh, one thing I noticed at rehearsals here, uh, and, you know, your involvement with the Evolution Stage School, you have schools now um, all over the place. Yeah, Longford, Roscommon and Kinnegad, yeah. Kinnegad. And, you know, are there Christmas shows coming up? Not actual Christmas shows with the school, but we have kids involved in the snowman show in the Borgosh, which yeah. is actually on next Sunday. And then for Sunday after, there's uh, 56 kids from Evolution Stage School doing three shows on each Sunday. Isn't to that? Yeah, to over 2,000 people in each show. Like, you know, you, you, you bring in these children, and, you know, I just noticed at rehearsals, we didn't, I, I didn't actually know they were here. You know, and it's difficult to, you know, to not know children are around. They suddenly just appear on the stage uh, like magic. Yeah. And they're beautiful, sort of smiling faces. And, uh, you know, it's just fantastic to hear them. Yeah. You know, are they, like that, are they like that when they come in? Yeah, a lot of them are. But then there's a lot of them who have, have to gain that confidence and yeah. feel comfortable yeah. to walk out, especially to walk out in front of an audience. It's, yeah. it's a big thing for a kid to do. Yeah, big thing for me to do as well. <laughs> but, you know, listening to Sean Rooney talking about he loved this place. And one thing I did get the impression that they really love what they're doing. Once they get involved in something like Evolution Stage, stage School, it's something that gives them a huge, a completely different yeah. outlook on life. And all the, all the kids you saw earlier, the, uh, they all performed here in October in our show, six nights here, yeah. and they loved it for a week. Yeah. You know? And you also put the show on in the, in the Helix, <coughs> don't you? At, at well, we did that for our fifth anniversary show, yeah. which was like a huge undertaking because mm. it was our three schools together. Yeah. So bringing all the kids together and we bust them all up for rehearsals and everything, it was, it was, it was huge. And who's that lovely lady that, that, that mm -hmm. was with us? Tracy. Tracy. Tracy's the choreographer, yeah. Yeah, and I was asking her earlier on, are you very stern? And she no. says, no. <laughs> no, the kids know what, to, what we expect from them, so yeah. we just, have to, She's we just have to look at them, really. Yeah, she can smile. Yeah. <laughs> you know that look? Yeah. <laughs> and they're like, okay. Yeah, it's great. It's a great yeah, gift, yeah, great no, gift to have. Great. Uh, y you know, I'm convinced that we need to hear uh, a Paul Hennessy tour, a solo tour. With maybe <laughs> tour of Longford. With you, no. <laughs> you know, we're used to hearing you with, you know, with the full bells and whistles, but um, later on tonight we're going to hear you singing something with, with no bells and whistles, which is, which is lovely to hear. But tonight, uh, for this, and this is going to be the closing part of the show, uh, tell us what you're going to do for us. Uh, tonight, uh, well, I have the kids coming on in a few minutes. Mm. Um, I'm just going to sing Silent Night. It's a lovely arrangement of Silent Night. I can't wait to hear it. Paul, Paul Hennessy, ladies and Thank gentlemen. Thank you. Thanks, Charlie. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.